Suppose you are a great fan of science fiction movies and books. You must have heard about the quantum being used so many times. And if you paid attention to your science classes in school, you should know what the word quantum implies. Talking about quantum physics or trying to explain the quantum realm would just bore you out. So today, we are going to be examining something even more fascinating. But before we delve into the business of the day, please click that subscribe button on your screen right there and turn on post notifications so that you can stay tuned and not miss out on any of the content that would be made available on the channel. We would be talking about quantum computing. Is it a myth? Does it exist already? What can it do? How does it work? But before we launch into all of that, let's go back in time to where the idea of quantum computing was first conceived. The History of Quantum Computing the story of quantum computing will be incomplete if we fail to mention Richard Feynman. Quantum computing began back in 1981 when this famous physicist Feynman asked a question at a conference on physics and computation at the Institute of Technology in Massachusetts. His question was, can we simulate physics on a computer? At that time, the answer to this would have been something close to the negative or more like not precisely because quantum or not all kinds of physics. One of the branches of physics is quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics is the study of laws of nature and the scale and view of individual atoms and particles. The reason why quantum physics might not be simulated on a computer is that the full description of quantum physics has so many variables. This would be a problem because the computer would be unable to keep up with all the different variables. If one particle has to be described by two variables, more particles would mean even more variables. The information would be so much that computers would not have enough memory to handle them. By the time Feynman asked this question, many physicists knew the limitations and why it would not work. But they were not thinking like Feynman was thinking. Feynman decided to turn this problem into something positive by proposing that they build a quantum mechanical computer. If they couldn't simulate quantum physics on regular computers, why not create one that would be better than the normal computers and would do something extraordinary? Over the next few years, nothing happened. But Feynman wouldn't stop talking about his idea, and soon enough, he managed to get a small number of people thinking about his problem, which is how the concept of quantum computing was born. What is quantum computing? How does it work? According to Wikipedia, quantum computing uses quantum phenomena such as superposition and entanglement to perform computation. Computers that are capable of carrying out quantum computations are known as quantum computers. The study of quantum computing is referred to as quantum information science. This is where you can learn how to use a quantum computer to do quantum computation. Quantum computers can solve normal problems too. Computational problems like integer factorization can be solved faster using a quantum computer instead of normal computers. Normal computers work using ones and zeros, but quantum computers carry out tasks and solve problems based on the probability of an object state before it is measured. Since quantum mechanics studies the laws of nature from the viewpoint of individual atoms and particles, Quantum computers work on the probability of the object state before it is measured. They can process more data exponentially compared to normal computers. Regular computers work with parameters that are gotten from the definite position of a physical state. These parameters and measurements are usually binary. That's why you have the ones and zeros, a single state like on or off. Each of its logical operations is based on one of these two positions. In quantum computers, it is way different. Operations are carried out using the quantum state of an object instead of its positions. When regular computers use a definite position to create ones and zeros known as bits, quantum computers make quibits using an object quantum state. This quibit is the object's undefined property before it has been detected. For example, the photon's polarization or the spin of an electron. Instead of having an exact position like normal computers, quantum computers use superposition and entangle other objects' superposition. Even if we do not know the outcome yet, they would be mathematically related. These entangled superpositions are then fed into special algorithms that would solve them in the fraction of the time that it would take regular computers to solve them if they can even calculate them at all. That is how a quantum computer works. Algorithms like that would help solve complex mathematical problems or produce codes that would be almost impossible to break. They could also be used to predict multiple particle interactions and chemical reactions. This would mean that quantum computers would carry out tasks and solve problems that normal computers are equipped to solve more efficiently and faster. Does quantum computing exist already? Since the inception of the concept of quantum computing, corporations and tech companies have taken up Feynman's dream to build quantum computers. As of 2018, Intel was already making chips for quantum computers. They were already creating software algorithms and programs and other things necessary for a quantum computer to run correctly, and the technology hasn't even fully existed yet. Intel created 49 and 17 quit superconducting test chips for quantum computing. 
The race to build quantum computers is on, as scientists anticipate all the possibilities that could be achieved with quantum computing. Quantum computing promises to help scientists formulate new materials, solve complex mathematical calculations, and create more secure data encryption and near-perfect security. Quantum computing also promises to help predict climate change as the years go by. The development of this kind of machine would take years, and they are probably still a decade away from completion, but there are plenty of milestones between here and there. The basic unit of information in a quantum computer is the qubit. Most of the development process involves packing as much of these qubits as possible onto a processor chip. Quibits can perform many calculations at once, but there are different types of quibits, and some have to be kept in special conditions to work appropriately and sustainably. All quibits are very fragile. That is a known fact. Some of them require temperatures 250 times colder than the temperature in deep space in order to remain stable. A computer isn't all about the processor, and the same goes for quantum computers. Other components would also go into the workings. As quantum computing is doing different from every other form of computing known to man, there is the need for new algorithms, software, operating systems, interconnects, and some inventions we probably haven't even thought about yet. The quantum computer might boast of a massive processing and computing power, but the process and technologies are so complicated that the progress is slow. In 2019, Google, one of the most prominent tech pioneers, published a landmark quantum supremacy claim. They claim that their quantum computer is the first to perform an almost impossible calculation for normal computers to solve. This calculation in question would take the best normal computer 10,000 years to solve by Google's estimation. Quantum supremacy is a milestone in quantum computing's overall development because it proves that quantum computers can indeed outperform normal computers by an extensive margin. It is also proof that quantum computers can perform as envisioned and expected. A quantum physicist from Sydney, Michelle Simmons, says that Google has given us the first experimental evidence that the quantum speedup is achievable in a real-world system. This success that Google claimed has not only been proved for a specific case, but it is still a step in the right direction. In conclusion, does quantum computing exist now? Well, we can't say an outright yes to that question. Google's achievement is like a Hello World program. This program is usually used to test a new system. The program is run on the system, asking the system to display those words. While the program itself has no use and serves no purpose to the system's functionality, it tells you that the system is working correctly. So, Google's achievement is proof that quantum computing is possible and is within our grasp. It means that quantum hardware and software would and is working correctly. If you love this video, click the like button, and don't forget to click that red button that says subscribe.